Hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, Kevin Messner, Pastor Kevin here. Um, Going to get ready to do a teaching for our Live at Five service from Living Word Bible Church in Mesa. And um, just going to kind of make some small talk here for a little bit, give people a chance to jump on. Um, and uh, we'll get started here in a little bit. Hope everybody's doing well with this whole COVID-19 thing. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's very, very interesting, isn't it? Um, doing some different things. Uh, I'm so proud of what our church is doing, what Living Word Bible Church is doing. Um, pastors Jason and Kelly Anderson, Pastors Scott and Holly Anderson, have really given us some wisdom that they've received from God. And, and we've been doing drive-in church for several weeks now. Uh, we have a, a, our stage set up outside, uh, on our west side of our building by the parking lot. We've got a big screen set up. And our praise and worship happens out there. People pull into the parking lot and we set it up so that the cars are in the front and then the SUVs and crossovers and then the trucks in the back. Uh, people tune their radio into a particular FM channel and they can hear it. And uh, it's been fantastic. And um, so uh, that's been going good. We've gotten some great publicity from uh, local news channels and um, some other uh, media that have been out. And so that's been a lot of fun. Um, been getting a little warm in the parking lot the last couple of weeks. We hit 100 degrees. Uh, by the time we wrap up, pretty close to 100. So being in the parking lot for anywhere from three to six hours kind of drains you a little bit, but been a lot of fun. So uh, I'm not sure what your church has been doing. If you go to a different church, hopefully you've been able to stay connected somehow. And, um, you know, a lot of live streaming going on, which is good. we got to keep getting the gospel of Jesus Christ out to the world. Amen. And uh, so hopefully... Uh, Hopefully things are going good for you, but um, um, maybe give it another minute or so. I'm going to do a teaching tonight called um, Of Men and Angels, and um, I believe it'll bless you. It's not going to be real deep. It's uh, just going over some different scriptures about angels, and so I'll get that started here in about a minute or so. Um, I should have come up with a joke before this. Darn it. I, never, I didn't even think of coming up with a joke to start off. <sighs> Pastor Scott's going to be so disappointed in me. I didn't start off with a joke. Oh, well. Um, but uh, anyhow, yeah. So we, we're excited because uh, we found out from uh, in Arizona, the state attorney general said uh, laid out some rules as to what churches can do to get rolling again. And so next weekend, we're going to do drive-in church on Friday night. And then we follow it up with a movie. And then drive-in church on Saturday night, followed up by a movie. And then Sunday at 8, 9, 15, and 11, we're going to do services inside. And for those who aren't comfortable coming into the sanctuary, they can still do the drive-in church thing. They'll see it on the screen out there. And uh, we'll be doing following the, the guidelines set forth by the uh, State Attorney General with distancing and everybody's got to wear a mask and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll be doing that, but it'll just be good to be back in the building together. So uh, um, I think we got some people jumped on, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get started with my teaching. Again, I'm Pastor Kevin Messner. I'm one of the staff pastors at Living Word Bible Church. And uh, normally we are in the sanctuary Sunday nights at 5 p.m. for a service called Live at 5 and um, obviously not meeting in the sanctuary now. So uh, the four of us pastors who have who lead that service have been rotating and uh, doing some Facebook Live stuff. Uh, you heard Pastor David White last week, and um, it's my turn tonight. Uh, next week there won't be anything because it's Mama's Day, and so on Mama's Day we always shut down Live at Five so that you can uh, spend that time with Mom. So there will not be a service next week, and then hopefully the week after that maybe we'll be back in the building praying, hoping, so that'll be good. But um, Live at Five started as a service with Dr. Maureen Anderson, one of our founding pastors. Uh, she had a miracle service, and uh, they made some transitions, made some changes, and they turned it over to, uh, at the time, three different pastors, and then I was blessed enough to join them. And uh, so we rotate and we do Live at Five, and we still believe God for miracles. So if you need a miracle, please hit me up, send me a message, and uh, I'll get some people praying for that miracle to come in line for you, to have it come into action. And um, uh, we always want to pray that everything that Jesus paid for on that cross at Calvary, uh, he paid a dear price um, on Calvary for us. And uh, we want to make sure that everything he paid for manifests in your body, in your life. So we'll be praying that with you 
And, and I want to thank Drs. Tom and Maureen Anderson, the founding pastors of our church, uh, as well as uh, our current lead pastors, Pastors Scott and Holly, Pastors Jason and Kelly Anderson. Uh, they're doing a phenomenal job of leading and growing our church and, and transitioning some things. And to watch it grow has been huge and fun. And so to be a part of it has been great. So I'm going to pray and we'll get started uh, on my teaching of men and angels. So let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for all of us being able to gather here. Uh, Father God, wherever these people are, Father, they're just tuning in and and uh, we're able to gather together, but we're separate and uh, through technology. So Father, I just uh, I pray, Father God, that uh, everybody that's, that's tuning in right now, if they have needs, Father God, you are the need meter. And uh, Father God, you bring peace into their life. Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. And Jesus, when you're our Lord, that means peace is our Lord. So I pray peace over every person that's watching right now. Um, during this crazy time that we're in, Father God, we need peace. And uh, Father God, we need to put our trust and our confidence in you, knowing that your plan is better than any plan a man could have. And your plan always exposes the lies and it exposes the things that are going on that don't need to be going on. So, Father, we pray for your truth to be revealed, Father God, for your truth to come forth, for healing in this land, Father God, not only from this virus and, and those who have been infected, Father God, healing for them, but also spiritual healing for the United States, Father God. Uh, pray for all the leaders, not only our president, but all the governors who have big decisions to make, Father God, that they would make righteous decisions and that you would move in their life, Father God, and you would touch them and uh, your will would be done. And uh, So, Father God, I just thank you for the word that you placed on my heart tonight. Father God, I thank you that it's a word that uh, will bless people who watch this video, who see this live. Uh, so, Father God, I just thank you for it and uh, just praise you. And uh, we worship you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. So, hey, everybody, uh, thanks for tuning in uh, live at 5. But I also want to welcome um, Wednesday mornings. We do a men's Bible study at Living Word Bible Church. Hasn't been going on for a while because of the whole COVID thing. But it's called Band of Brothers or Bob. And so uh, I want to welcome all the guys from Bob this, who are uh, tuning in as well and going to participate in our message tonight. So I uh, really appreciate those guys being a part of it as well. Um, I want to get started. How this all started for me was a couple weeks ago I read an article um, about angels and people's perception of angels. And, and, and as I read the article, I, I, I realized that there are a lot of misconceptions about angels. We have a lot of misconceptions. And, and what I mean by misconceptions is when we talk about angels... We should be going to the Word of God to find out all about angels. Um, don't listen to what other people are saying because they may not be basing it on the truth that is the Word of God. And so angels have a purpose. They're God-created, and we're going to talk about that. They, are, they have a purpose, um, and God has a plan for them. Uh, God has a relationship with angels, and we are to have a relationship with angels. And we want to make sure that that relationship is right. We want to make sure that our belief is right. Um, otherwise, you, you might be believing for something that can't happen because it's not how the whole system works. Does, does that make sense? I, I want to make sure that when when you think of angels, you think of them in the proper perspective so you can use all the power and the authority that God has given you through those angels and with those angels. And so we're going to talk about that. I want to talk about where did they come from. <clears throat> um, this article pointed out that some people believe that angels have always existed. Not the case. Uh, God has always existed. But angels were created, and so I'm going to give you a scripture on that. I'm not going to give you opinion, because opinion doesn't matter. It's um, Opinion doesn't do anything for you. We've all got an opinion. Um, I'm going to give you the Word of God, and uh, this is not an exhaustive study. I've got maybe 10, 12 scriptures, which is a lot for me when I teach, um, but it's not exhaustive. It's not meant to give you everything you need to know. It's meant to encourage you to understand that whenever it's whether it's angels or anything else about your Christian walk, go to the Word of God to find out what truth is and how things work. Amen. And so I'm going to get started. In uh, my first scripture is Exodus chapter 20 and uh, verse 11. And this scripture I'm taking from the NIV. I'm using a few different versions of the Bible tonight. I'll try to point out which version I'm using for each one. But this is Exodus 20, verse 11 in the NIV. 
And it says, For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That's why the Lord blessed the seventh day and set it apart as holy. And what I want to point out is, for in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything that is in them. Everything that is in them. Genesis 2, chapter, uh, I'm sorry, Genesis 2, verse 1, in the New King James, says, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And the word hosts there literally means the armies. Uh, it refers to the angels. And so the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And by finished, it means it's complete. It is all encompassing. It means to finish doing a thing, to make an end or to end, to accomplish, to fulfill, or to bring to pass. So it was finished then. And the reason I'm hitting that so hard is I want you to understand that every angel that God ever needed and that exists today was created during creation. So there's no angels being added. The angels that God needed were there. He was finished. He completed it. And we know that whenever God finished a day, he, he looked at it and he said, it is good. And then when he looked at it at the end, he said, this is, it's complete now. My creation is complete. And so um, all the angels that we need were there in the beginning. God created them. Amen? Um, I want to go to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 24 in the New Living Translation. And this is the first time where you really see angels in action in the Word of God. Um, this is where Adam and Eve had done, did the one rule to follow, just one rule, and they couldn't do it. They ate from the tree, and um, so God was casting them out of the garden. And it says in Genesis 3.24 in the New Living Translation, after sending them out, after God sent Adam and Eve out, the Lord God stationed a mighty cherubim, to the east of the Garden of Eden. Eden. Now the cherubim is just, that's an angel. That's a form of an angel. And he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. So we see that God is using an angel here to keep Adam and Eve out of the garden. And so the, the, the angel's job was to carry out what God needed him to do. And so that's one of the things that we see throughout the Word of God is one of the purposes, one of the purposes of the angels is to do what God is, needs them to do at that time. God sent a cherubim and he guarded the east side of the, get, of the garden. Um, I love this one. Um, this is such a powerful scripture. Isaiah chapter 6. And I'm doing New King James Version for this one. And it's verses 1 through 4. And um, gosh, I love this one. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died... I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, now that's angels. Each one had six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. One cried to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him of the one who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. And I love that because it shows us a couple things about angels. It shows us that they're praising God. They're in heaven they're praising God. They're worshiping, they're praising. But imagine the strength for one angel to cry out, Holy, holy, holy. And the posts, the doorpost shook, and the whole room was filled with smoke. Every year in November, middle of November, um, the city of Mesa, here in Arizona, Mesa, Arizona, they hold a thing called the Mesa Music Festival. And it's really cool. They do it in downtown Mesa. Now, Mesa, if you're not familiar with Mesa, it's a town of uh, about 475,000 people, so it's a good sized community. And um, the downtown area, uh, they set up like six, eight, uh, eight to ten different music stages throughout the downtown. And they have like 200 bands that come in 
and they perform on Friday and Saturday. And so each band will do like a 45 minute set. And some of these bands are local. A lot of them come from all over the United States. Some come from other countries and they're here to perform to hopefully get a music label or a music contract, something like that. And so it's really cool. It's free. And so you can go down there and you can hang out and listen to all kinds of music on Friday and Saturday. They always have one main headliner band. And a couple years ago, that band was P.O.D. And if you've been in Christian circles or Christian music at all, you've heard of P.O.D. Um, P.O.D. has been around for like 25, 30 years. They've been around forever. And they are awesome, awesome bands. So look them up. P.O.D. Payable Upon Death. And um, so they were the headliner band that year. So they were going to start Saturday night like at 9 o'clock. Now, Saturday night's at 9 o'clock. Not uncommon for Christy and I to be sleeping on the couch. But we decided to get up and go down to hear P.O.D. Because we both love P.O.D. And we got down there. And we were lucky enough to be standing right in the front. And we were just, you know, six feet from the speakers. And P.O.D. is a head-banging band, right? And... They started up the music, and those speakers were just blaring. And our my whole insides just shook from the power that came from those speakers, from that bass. My, my chest was vibrating, and, and I, I couldn't hear very good for a day or two. Um, but it, the power in, in coming from those speakers was incredible. But I didn't see one doorpost shake. All the power that came from those speakers and from that music, where it just shook my inside, yet in Isaiah chapter 6, one angel declaring, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, shook the doorposts and filled the room with smoke. I can't imagine the power that is in that angel and in an angel's voice when they make that declaration. And I just, I absolutely love that scripture. I want to go to um, Luke chapter 1. As you can tell, I'm not really going real deep. I'm just kind of giving you some scriptures and, and uh, touching on them a little bit because I want you to look at these scriptures. I hope you're writing them down. I want you to look at these scriptures and so that you have a foundation to know more a little more about angels. But I want to go to Luke chapter 1 and um, verses 11 through 13, again in the, in the NIV this time. And we see here, uh, this is when um, uh, John the Baptist, when his parents, Zechariah, uh, Zechariah was working in the temple, and uh, Zechariah and his wife, they were old, they, they, they didn't have any children, and an angel appears to Zechariah. And so I want to read that to you. It says, Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, to Zechariah, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. So Zechariah and Elizabeth had been praying for a son, and the prayer had been heard. So the angel goes down to deliver the good news to Zechariah. So one of the things that an angel does is he delivers messages to us from heaven, from God. And so that's what you see happening here, is the angel came and visited Zechariah in the temple. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up on that story again, but I, I want to interject something else here. Um, we had, living in Minnesota, um, and I don't know if my cousin Brad is watching right now, but Brad and I were in real estate together. And um, uh, we attended the same church in our hometown. And in that church, there was a, a sweet, sweet elderly couple uh, we called him Brother Floyd and Sister Lorraine, uh, Floyd and Lorraine Kruger. Uh, he was a retired pastor, and uh, he retired from a, a denominational church, uh, and he started attending um, the church that we were attending, and he would preach once in a while. And um, Brother Floyd, they were, gosh, in their 70s maybe, um, and we knew that they would go to a certain place for coffee, and so Brad and I would go hang out with them sometimes just to hear them share stories. Brother Floyd one day shared a story when they were doing a, um, they had a, 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 a mission that they ran in Minneapolis, Minnesota. 
And um, they had a lot of homeless people, drug addicts, prostitutes that would come in. And they would minister to these people. These people could live there and hang out there. And, and they would minister to them. And they would provide food and clothing and shelter for them. And, and give them some odd jobs. And, and, um, but more than anything, they gave them the word of God. And um, one day, a, a guy came into that mission. And um, Brother Floyd just talked to him. And he, and he and Sister Lorraine spent some time talking to him. And the guy was there for a time. If I remember the story right, he was there for a, a couple of days, I think, maybe. Um, and when, when the guy, and, and Brother Floyd said that they, he had such a wonderful time talking to this guy. And they talked about Jesus so much. And there was something about this guy that really drew Brother Floyd and Sister Lorraine to this, this gentleman. And um, when it came time for him to go, they really didn't want him to go um, because they, they just felt something special. And he had really imparted into Brother Floyd and Sister Lorraine and encouraged them because, you know, all the work they were doing, sometimes that can be a thankless job. But, but this, this guy really encouraged them and blessed them and lifted them up. And, and uh, they had such a wonderful time having him there in the mission. And um, when it was time for him to go, he, he said he had to go. And he, and he walked out the door, and a few seconds, le less than a minute after the door closed, Brother Floyd thought of something that he wanted to say to the guy. So he opened the door and stepped out. Now he stepped out, and this building was a long building. There were no other doorways on, that, on the side of the street where this door was. And across the street, there were no doorways. And it, this building covered a whole block. And when he opened up the door and looked, the man was gone. It wasn't there. It's not like he ducked into a doorway. He didn't get into a car because there was no vehicles. There was no people walking on the street. The guy was just gone. And Brother Floyd, who I have so much respect for to this day, he's, he's, he's with Jesus right now, um, but he was convinced that this was an angel that was sent to encourage them, to lift them up. And so they had an encounter with an angel. And that's one of the things that we see is, is angels are there to encourage and to lift us up. And so I just want to interject that story as I talk about Zechariah. Um, I want to continue in Luke chapter 1. And I want to pick it up at verse 18. This is still the story of Zechariah. So again, Luke 1, 18 through 20 in the NIV. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. Now that the angel had promised them you're going to have a baby. And Zechariah saying, how can I be sure of this? The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at the appointed time. One thing I get out of this, and this is personal, this is not necessarily for you. Maybe if what I'm speaking doesn't line up with the Word of God, maybe I'm better off just zipping it, right? Because Zechariah's words didn't line up with the Word of God, and all of a sudden he couldn't speak for a, a while. Um, but angels have a power, they have authority, obviously, um, but they stand in the presence of God. I, I picture heaven being, you know, God is there, and Jesus is there, and these angels are just standing around. We're going to talk more about this. And they're just waiting to go do something. And we're going to talk about what are they waiting to do. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But I, I, I get excited when I think of what all those angels are up there doing, right? Um, I, want, I want to bring something up at this point. Um, and I want, to, I want to do it in Psalms chapter 8. Psalm chapter 8, verses 4 and 5. And I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. Um, one of the misconceptions that is, is, is common, and it's because of the way the Word of God is translated, Psalm 8, 4, and 5 says, What are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you made them only a little lower, and in most translations it says you made them a little lower than the angels. You made man a little lower than the angels. And that's it. Not an accurate translation. And I'm not just saying that, because, but the word that they use there, that's used, is Elohim. And in every place in Scripture, the word Elohim is translated as God. As a matter of fact, that's one of the names of God, Elohim. 
But in this scripture, in a lot of translations, a lot of versions of the Bible, they translated that word as angels, and it's not an accurate translation of that word. It is actually God. So the scripture should read, you made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. And as a matter of fact, if you read it in the New Living Translation like I am, it says you made them a little lower than God. Keep in mind that what that means is in the hierarchy, there's God and then there's people and then there's angels. We were created to be higher than angels, a little lower than God. And I think that's important for us to keep in mind because we have misconceptions over who angels are and what angels do. And, and you're, they're not over you. They're not above you. In God's hierarchy, you are above them. And we'll touch on that a little bit later again. Um, I want to jump now to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. And I'm doing the New Living Translation on this scripture as well. It says, therefore, angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. An angel's job is to care for you. When you've received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that angel's job is to take care of you. It's to take care of you. They're sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. I remember, gosh, this is got to be 25 years ago um there was a story and again it's 25 years ago and so i'm going off a of memory here um but there was a, a and i believe it was in florida at a college campus there were a lot of college female college students that were being um they were being attacked they were being raped they were being assaulted and um they were the police were sure it was the the same guy or same couple guys doing this <clears throat> and they finally caught the guy and it turned out i can't remember how it all transpired but there was another girl that they saw that this guy saw but he didn't attack her he started following her he was he was kind of chasing her down a little bit and all of a sudden the dude just took off he wanted nothing to do with this girl and when he was being questioned by the police they said well why didn't you attack her and he said are you kidding me that nine foot dude following her, there's no way I'm tangling with a guy that big to get at a girl. And that angel was there to care for her, to minister to her. And she was a Christian. She was a, a, a Jesus believing Christian, a born again, tongue talk and on fire for Jesus Christian. And that angel was there that took care of her. And so that's one of the angel's jobs is to take care of us. Um, so, a couple of minutes ago, I was talking about, you know, I picture heaven and these angels are just kind of like waiting, like waiting to go do stuff. They're waiting to go protect that girl in Florida or they're waiting to drop in on Brother Floyd in Minneapolis and they're just waiting. And well, what are they waiting for? Um, Psalms chapter 103, verse 30, and I'm doing this out of the New American Standard Bible. It says, bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength who perform his word, God's word, obeying the voice of his word. So they perform God's word and they obey the voice of God. Notice it separates that it, they perform his word, but then they obey his voice. So it's separating the word and the voice, and it's doing that for a reason. The reason is, is because you and I can speak the word of God. And when we speak the word of God, we put angels into action. See, it's not just God's voice that they obey, it's his word that they obey. And when you and I put that word into action, when we speak that word, it puts angels into action. Something that I hear a lot and that I pray over my family, I know my dad prays it over my family and over his family and, and um, I don't my friends Tim and Connie Kepke, they, they're watching tonight. They, they pray it. It's Psalm 91. And Psalm 91 protection, where they, you will give your angels guard over us, and you'll lift us up so we don't even dash our foot against a stone. And when we, when we declare that, the angels go to work because they hearken to the word of God. They obey the word of God. And when you speak the word of God, those angels are put into action. 
All right? So that's one of the purposes of them. Now, we have an example of that in the book of Daniel. And I'm not going to get I'm not going to read the whole story, but Daniel chapter 10, go read Daniel chapter 10. It'll give you a a, a fantastic overview of what angels do, but I'm just going to take a couple of the verses out of there and talk about it. D Daniel's been praying over something, and in Daniel chapter 10, verses 10 through 12, again from the New American Standard Bible, it says, Then behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said to me, O Daniel, man of esteem, understand the words that I'm about to tell you and stand upright, for I have been sent to you. This angel had been sent to Daniel. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. And then he said to me, Don't be afraid, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart on understanding this and on humbling yourself before God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to your words. So the angel came in response to Daniel's words. See, Daniel's words put those angels into action on his behalf. When we're speaking the word of God, or when we're speaking according to the word and will of God, the angels are put into action. And that's one of the things that they do. That's one of their purposes. Amen? I hope this is blessing you. Um, Revelations chapter 12. And um, just about done. I only got a couple more scriptures. Revelations chapter 12. Verses 7 through 9, <clears throat> and we could talk a long time on this, these couple verses, and I'm doing these out of the New Living Translation. It says, there, Then there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. And the dragon lost the battle, and, he is a, and his angels were forced out of heaven. This great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to earth with all of his angels. Satan is a fallen angel. Michael, Michael the angel, his name is brought up in scripture a few times. And it's always, he's a warring angel. Excuse me, i got to take a drink. He's a warring angel, and he's... Dude likes to, he likes to muss it up a little bit. He likes to go around. And, um... So here he is, and he's taken on Lucifer, who was cast out of heaven with a third of the angels that were following him, and that's how Satan came to be. I'm not going to go into that. We, you, you can go read in, in, in that. There's a couple different verses, a couple different places in the word Thessalonians. You'll find where it's talking about Satan. Um, he's a fallen angel. Um, so he was created by God in during creation, and um, he just got this idea that he was going to elevate himself above God, and he got about a third of the angels to tag along with him, and uh, so they were all cast out in this battle with Michael, and um, that's how we got Satan and all the demons that are wandering around right now on the earth. Um, I want to wrap it up with with this with this one scripture. We talked a lot about how we can put angels into action, how we can. We can get them to go, and and um, but Revelations chapter twenty-two, verses eight and nine. Of course, this is John, and uh, well, I guess I didn't have to say that because the, the the verse says, "I John, am the one who heard and saw all these things." And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said, "Do not worship me." I am a servant of God, just like you and your brothers as the prophets, as well as all those who obey what is written in this book. Worship only God. There are people, groups of people, who worship angels. It could be something you could fall into, because we put angels into action, right? Our words, when we speak the word of God... Those angels get put into action and, and, and they war for us and they fight for us and they deliver us news like Brother Floyd had. And like, I mean, Jesus was announced through the angels and his resurrection was announced by an angel. And, and it would be so easy to fall into worshiping an angel, but the angel is very clear here. Do not worship me. I am a servant of God just like you. Be very careful. When it comes to angelic things, don't worship an angel. Um, the purpose of my message is 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 to bring some clarity. Um, one of the romantic 
kind of things that we hear sometimes and and we kind of almost want it to be true but i think we saw in the word tonight that it's not true is that when our loved ones pass they go on to become angels and I'm so happy that my mom is not an angel. My mom passed away in December 31st, 2014. I'm so happy she's not an angel. She's not an angel because I don't want her warring and I don't want her delivering messages. See, my mom right now is in heaven and she's praising and worshiping Jesus. She's worshiping God. She's not an angel. She's, she's an angel, so to speak, but she's not a literal angel. Mom's not looking down, watching over me. That's not her job. Her job right now is to worship the Lord. So don't 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 get caught up in that because that's an error in belief and that can cause you to think wrong and that can cause you to pray wrong and that can cause you to do get off track in your Christian walk. And it's so important that in our Christian walk we, we have truth. And there's accuracy in what we believe. There's accuracy in how we pray. There's accuracy in, 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 in what we believe. Because if we get off track a little bit, then we're getting into something that we shouldn't get into. And it's so easy to get pulled into something that's, that's not right. And so I want to challenge you tonight to, to, to search the Word of God and maybe take it even further than this. What else do you believe and is it biblical? Does it line up with the Word of God or is it something that got passed down generation to generation that isn't biblical? Or maybe it's, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trying to stir up trouble. I'm just trying to challenge you because my heart, Christy and I, our heart has always been that, that, that we want to help those who have accepted Christ have a higher walk and a, a better walk with Jesus. Because that's what it's about. Our victory on earth comes because, because we have a tight walk with Jesus. And all of, our, all of our thoughts and all of our beliefs when it comes to Christianity have to line up with the Word of God because that is the authority. And so my prayer is that you have a closer walk with Jesus. You start searching out, what do I believe and is it biblically sound? And I'm certainly not an expert. And like I said, this is not meant to be an exhaustive study of, of angels. It's not what it's about. It was just some talking points, some, some key things that I think we need to keep in mind. That they were created by God. They do work for God. They war. They, they, they hearken to the Word of God and the voice of God. It was divided, the Word of God and the voice of God. So we can put angels to work by speaking the word of God. And so I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you to do that. Um, keep everything in proper perspective. Don't worship him. Um, worship Jesus and only Jesus. Worship the Lord God Almighty. And uh, we'll be safe that way. Amen. I hope that blessed someone out there. Um, uh, before we go, I want to I want to say a prayer. Um, you know, getting to heaven is got to be the ultimate goal, right? Um, that's that's the deal and and being a good person doesn't necessarily get you there it's 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 real simple romans 10 says that that um if you confess with your mouth that jesus christ is lord and you believe in your heart your heart that god raised him from the dead you'll be saved and that's what gets you into heaven and it's just a simple prayer and it seems so easy really that's all i gotta do i gotta say something and believe something yep you gotta say something and believe something that's that's what romans 10 says um Sometimes religion comes in and and it tries to make it hard and you got to jump through this flaming hoop and then you got to do this and then you got to twirl around and you got to do all this. No, it just speak with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you'll be saved. And so what I want to do right now is I want to say a prayer. And if you've never done that, if you've never invited Jesus into your life to be your Lord and your savior, I want the opportunity to pray with you tonight. And it's not hard. We're just going to, I'm going to say a prayer. You're going to repeat it after me. Are you ready to pray? All right. Repeat this after me. Dear Father God, I come to you right now and I ask you to forgive me of all sin. Now I can believe in my heart that Jesus was raised from the dead. I confess with my mouth that he is Lord. Jesus, I believe in you. 
Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you said that for the first time, please hit me up. Send me a message, private message, however you want to do it. Let me know you did that. It would mean the world to me. Um, maybe someone said that prayer because you've been away from Jesus a little bit and it's time to get right. Let me know that too as well. Um, next week, like I said, we're not going to be doing a live at 5. There isn't one because it's Mama's Day. So if uh, if your mom is still alive and with you, make sure you do something special. Maybe you can't see her. Maybe you can't hang out with her. But you can give her a call or send her a message or something. Um, my mom, like I said, she's in heaven, and and so I'm gonna have some good thoughts about my mom. Um, and uh, but I, my wife, I can I can I can help the boys take care of her. So um, I, I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this is a blessing to you, and uh, we will see you soon. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your night, and have a fantastic week. God bless you. Bye bye.